I used to wake up in the morning, and before my feet even hit the floor, my hand reached for my phone. Whenever I had some spare time, I just couldn't resist that infinite feed of content. And after hours of never-ending scrolling, I found myself feeling frustrated and having zero energy. I'm not enough. I'm stupid. I'm fat. I used to have such thoughts after checking and scrolling through social media. I chatted with people a lot. And after that, I felt unhappy and even more isolated. I compared my realistic offline self to the flawless and edited online versions of others and had an extreme level of anxiety. I had a constant fear of missing out and was afraid of not being included and missing a social event and much, much more. But I managed to break my social media addiction and today I'm here to tell you how you can do it too. The first and most important tip is prioritize your real life over the digital one. Don't try to separate them. I think it's almost impossible to separate your digital life and your real life. And even if it was possible, why would we do that? If you're the same or almost the same person on your Instagram profile, for example, it's less stressful for you to be present on social media and you don't face the risk to hear something like, wow, you're so different in real life from a person you met online. It's the same trying to look better than you are. I had this problem. Every time I met a new person, I tried to say something that they would like. And sometimes I could even lie about myself to look cooler, smarter, or more confident. But I didn't think about the consequences. If I lie about myself, I should be consistent with my lie. I should remember what I said to every single person I interacted with. And it was a torture for me. When I realized that I couldn't do it anymore, I started telling the truth. Not because I'm a good person and I want to be honest with everybody, just because it's easier for me. That's why I'm saying that it's better to make priorities. I decided that my real life is much more important to me. And when I do something, I usually ask myself, is this action or activity helping me in my real life? I'm scrolling on social media for hours. Why? Am I looking for something particular? Or are you just wasting my time? I'm browsing the web to come up with ideas for my next videos. Or I just mindlessly checked in social media because I don't want to deal with my real life issues. These are two completely different situations. One more reason why I prioritize my real life over the digital one is the simple fact that to share something valuable online, I need to live my real life up to full potential. I can't talk about my experience if I don't have any. I can't tackle challenges and develop personally if I consistently escape reality. And I can't get to know myself better, what I like or dislike, how I react in different situations, what I believe in. To meet my true self, I should live my real life, achieve something, or make mistakes, try again, fail, and try one more time. I believe that social media has a lot of benefits. In our daily lives, for example, we may not be surrounded by people who think in the same direction as we do. And even if there are people who live nearby and think the same way as us, we usually can't find them. And social media can help with that. But despite all the benefits of virtual communication, I decided that my real life is much more important to me. And if you feel that you don't know yourself, you're influenced by other people from the internet too much, or you constantly change your opinions. You might be better off if you spend some time learning something new about your true self. And the only way to do that is spend more time living your real life instead of building your virtual identity. I intentionally started with more psychological advice because I'm sure that if we don't understand why we spend hours with our eyeballs glued to a screen and if we don't find some convincing reasons to prioritize our real lives, we won't change anything. Now it's time to move to more practical tips. Let's do it. The next strategy that helped me break my social media addiction may sound paradoxical. I started creating content. My main issue with social media was consuming more content that I could d d d d d d My main issue with social media was consuming more content that I could digest. And if you have this problem, creating content instead of consuming it can really help. Now I spend more time producing content, making research, writing scripts, filming, editing posting, and I almost don't have time to consume so much content like I did before. 
I don't have time and I don't want to. I want to do something completely different. In my case, the only option, which is opposite of being online, is live my real life. It works kind of like self-regulation. When I spend hours editing videos, the last thing I want to do afterwards is watch more videos. I believe that each of you have a unique and valuable experience and the world should know about it. So if you're interested, start posting share your story with others and get a lot of side benefits. One of them, decrease in mindless content consumption. The next thing that helped me tremendously is turning off notifications. I turned off almost all of them. And most of the time, my phone is in don't disturb mode. Sometimes it makes my life more complicated, especially when it comes to my relationships with delivery guys. But the advantages outweigh the disadvantages for sure. Without notifications, I feel more control over my life. When I'm ready to check my messages or comments, I check in social media instead of having a constant trigger that makes me distracted. Moreover, notifications are hard to resist. If you hear the sound, you just can't resist the temptation to check the notification immediately. And if you try not to check it, you spend so much mental effort and energy. I recently finished the book Deep Work by Carl Newport, and I'm just in love with the concept of having undistracted chunks of concentration during the day. It's not only about insane productivity, but it's also about building more meaningful and happy life. And to focus on something, we should get rid of as many distractions as we can. So let's help ourselves. Let's turn off notifications and regain control over our lives. The next tip to overcome social media addiction is make it hard to check on social media mindlessly. For those of you who want to quit social media, the most evident advice is to delete apps that you want to quit. If you're like me and you want to spend more time living your real life, make checking on social media more difficult. Once I deleted the Instagram app, and if I wanted to check in, I just opened the mobile version. It's less user-friendly, and this makes you spend much less time scrolling. It may be a good idea to move the app icon to the second or even third screen on your phone, and when you unlock your phone next time, you won't see it there. And if you don't see the social media icon every time you pick up your phone, you're less likely to spend time there. I realized that most of the time I checked on the social media mindlessly, and putting even a small barrier in the way can really help to stop scrolling. Another strategy to make more mindful choices when it comes to the use of social media is set on limits and really stick to them. There is no one to control you, so the only person who can be responsible and who can really stick to the rules you make is you. Of course, you can use special apps that block social media after you hit your limit. But we all understand that you can extend the limit. Or just delete this irritating app that spoils all the fun of spending time in virtual reality. That's why I'm talking not just about setting the limits, but about actually sticking to them. I was that person who one day decides to spend less time on social media and the next day finds herself scrolling numerous short videos for hours. But once I realized that there is no one who can help me, I stopped sabotaging my own promises to myself. But if you haven't managed to break your addiction at once, don't worry, it's okay. Just be honest with yourself and make promises that you can keep. The last tip that I find extremely helpful to break social media addiction is make your life interesting. If you decide that your real life is more important than your digital one, you'll inevitably start making your life more exciting. It won't change overnight. I basically don't believe in changes that happen instantly, but last long. Start dedicating time to hobbies you always want to try. Fill up your free time with activities that are good for you and that you enjoy. You will have less time to be present on social media and more time to be present in life. Again, it's a great way to get to know yourself better. And I think it's a remedy for many problems we have in life. You try something new. It may seem like nothing, but in reality, you get so many valuable insights about yourself that will help you navigate life in the future. The key here is not to wait for immediate results. It's a process. It takes time. Be kind to yourself and make small steps toward a big and interesting life where you don't forget to disconnect when you need to. You're very welcome to share your experience. Do you manage to have a healthy digital balance or are you just working on it? What other strategies do you find helpful to deal with social media addiction? I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I see you next time. Bye!